team out of the end zone. Sure. <laughs> yeah, they were a good offense too. You know, I was concerned about that, and and um, guys just played their butts off and did a good job of executing the plan and um, took a lot of pride in, in finishing the game, which was uh, which was cool. Um, didn't matter who was in the game at the end; those guys wanted to keep them out, and and uh, it was awesome to get that stop at the end. Have you guys made the most strides from game one to now? I think we're playing a lot better at safety, to be honest with you. Um, I think we made some moves there that uh, that were the correct things to do. Um, I think we're getting a little more comfortable in our in our lineup at, at linebacker. Um, I know we're doing a lot of toggling there. Um, you know, it certainly helps. Um, you know, you know Oklahoma State. We definitely missed Jacob Parrish, um, but I think we're playing a lot better around him at corner. Um, I think guys are just getting a little bit more comfortable playing together. I think there's just a little bit more flow to what they're doing, and the execution level is a little bit higher. Uh, okay, was well, it? Twelve team that ranks in the top twenty in scoring defense. Is that a particular sense of pride that you guys have? I I couldn't even have told you that we were to be honest with you. I I uh, you know I. <sighs> Yeah, I think that's really cool. Um, at the end of the day, though, I hope our guys are more zeroed in on just getting the next play stopped, you know, and getting out of that series and getting out of the next uh, quarter and the next half, you know, and just just kind of one at a time. That's been our that's been our thing. And I, I think one of the things that, you know, in reference to the other question too, I, I think early in the year, I thought there was a lot of pressure on those guys that they felt like they needed to be perfect all the time. And I think that the last couple of weeks. That pressure's eased off, and they're just playing football. And I think that's you know not worrying about all the that those kind of things, or you know just just doing what they do. And I think that's made us a lot a lot more comfortable on the field. Key was it to have Clifton just slide in and play like a starter? Yeah, he. Well, I, the way we look at him is that he is a starter. Um, he plays as many snaps as a starter. He just he's just a really good football player. He's tremendously sharp. Very unselfish for the things that we ask him to do. Um, plays all three linebacker spots. Plays two other spots in um, third down defense. And he's just, um, you know, we couldn't do what we can't, what we're doing without him. You know, it was noticeable when he was out of the lineup too. And so, um, you know, while uh, Austin uh, Romaine gets himself back to, to health, uh, good health status, I think Jake's going to continue to have to do some of those things. And how well he's playing now, it's scary to think how well he'd play if he was able to zero in on one thing or one position. So uh, Jake's, Jake's been phenomenal. Uh, Austin be back out there. I think he'll play this week. Um, you know, maybe not in in quite as many snaps as he was playing before the injury, but he he's been practicing all week. He'll be ready to go. What do you see from Donovan Smith, their quarterback? You know, we've got a lot of experience with him. You know, seeing him here, and you know, the scariest thing about uh, what they do is is you know, obviously they have a lot of offense and they do a lot of different things, but you know, when when they involve him in the run game, that's something that we're certainly uh, concentrating on because I think that's uh, an aspect that. As a 240-pound guy, you know it's not just getting people to the point of attack; it's actually finishing at the point of attack, also. So he's, um, you know, I, I know when he was here last year with Tech, caused us some problems in in some of the quarterback run game that they that they did, and, and scramble game on top of that, some of the design things and some of the things that that were maybe more off the cuff. I think he throws the ball well. He's got a just a rocket for an arm and. He's able to extend plays, and, and uh, he's a really good football player. When you couple that with the athletes they have on the perimeter, it's a good offense too. In a good way, did it feel like you guys flipped a 180 when it came to tackling at least last week? Yeah, no, I, I thought we tackled a lot better against a team that was breaking a lot of tackles, you know, and that's just what the Big 12 is. Houston's no different. We're going to have a lot of great athletes on the perimeter. They're going to have good backs. they got a quarterback that can break tackles. Uh, they've got linemen that can stay on you, and, and so – um, if we're going to play well, you know, if you look at it on Sunday, if we played well, it's probably because we tackled well. You know, if we didn't play well, it's probably because we didn't. You know, I don't think there's a lot of times where we're going to be just drastically out of position or anything like that. It's just we're going to have to finish plays, and when we do, we, we typically play really well. You were recruiting Desmond Purnell. Um, can you go back and tell me what your first impressions uh, of him were and what you like so much about his upside? Kind of exactly what we're getting right now, although in a different position. You know, we, we thought he was a safety at the time. You know, we didn't really know where to where to play him. He was still kind of a developing guy too. He was a late bloomer uh, a little bit, um, and we just thought um, that he was being a smart guy. He was going to fit our culture. He was going to be a try hard guy. He was going to be a, um, a guy that could learn multiple positions. And you know, he was a little bit of a fish out of water at safety, to be honest with you. That probably wasn't what he was going, you know, as he continued to develop and his body got bigger and 
He just had a different looking butt than the rest of the guys in the safety room. Um, and so, you know, we moved him to linebacker, um, you know, and, and didn't expect him to catch on quite as quickly as he had. You know, we toyed with him there for a little bit and, you know, sent him on some blitzes and stuff, and he looked really good doing that stuff. But just as we expect, he learns that he's learned that position, he's mastered that position. And I dare you to find anybody in the conference that's playing as fast as him, you know, in the things that he's doing right now. And, um, you know, this offseason was awesome for him. He's put on about another 16 pounds of muscle, and he just looks like a linebacker now. And he's playing at a really, really high level. What do you, do you attribute the red zone success the defense has had? Something we concentrated on a lot in the offseason, um, something we studied and, and worked a lot at. Um, you know, we were... I guess the word would be poor in red zone. You know, we you don't want to talk about scores. I think it's a misleading thing when you say red zone conversion percentage because you get down there. If a guy makes a field goal, it's great, and if you hold him a field goal, it's it's not good. You know, and 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 we look at it differently. I think if we if we hold him the field goals down there, we're we're doing well. So the the stat that we're most interested in is red zone touchdown percentage. If we get down there, and uh, that is something that we do track pretty closely, and I think we're second in the country in that. And um, I think it's just due to the fact that we're we're spending a lot of time talking about it. You know, we talk about it weekly. We talk about it uh, Friday nights. You know, it's something that we put an emphasis on. I don't know that we're doing anything really differently down there. Maybe a little bit more aggressive than we were in the past, but um, just the emphasis on it, I think, is is resonated with our players. What about on third down? Did you have similar success there? I think we're in, I think tw top twenty in the country. Yeah, I, I think we're we're. Um, you know, we've got some guys that are good man players, and I think that, that helps. Um, and I think, um, you know, another thing that I think we're getting a little bit better at is, is the looks and some of the understanding of where we can and cannot stand um, and, and being able to mix in some, some, some man with, with a lot of the zones that we like to play on, on third down. So, um, you know, we've we're, uh, we got a lot of guys that can rush. You know, uh, that, that helps. I mean, personnel-wise, we're built to, to be good in that, in that situation. And, um, you know, we've been able to knock down some runs that maybe come at, at inopportune times. You know, so some, some things that teams are trying to do to us is run the ball on third and long to try to keep us out of some of our stuff. And we've been, uh, we've been good on, on some of those situations too. So, you know, at the end of the day, it all just comes down to execution, you know. And, and uh, if you've got guys that believe in what you're doing, and I think we do, and, and uh, go out there and play fast, I think we can get things done. Does, does an air raid run more rev routes than normal passing offenses do? Um, yeah, I don't know. Philosophically, it, it depends on uh, the coach probably, but um, TCU is a huge rub route. Houston's going to be a, a team that's going to get you in man, and they have their things that they like in man. And um, So you know, I think they all have kind of similar thoughts and, and just trying to, um, trying to get one-on-ones and hope their guys can win. And we're hoping the same thing.